I tell you, pressures are all everywhere. Nice to be in the house of the Lord where you can just forget all of your worries. I know you hear, you uh, understand what I'm saying. You know, our anxieties, we just lay them aside. Not, not just anywhere, but really at the foot of the cross. And you're able to sing your songs coming from your heart. Not just your mind working, but your heart and emotions. There's some of you, when we were singing, you're falling your tears. Just by all, right? God is taking care of you this morning. Amen? And, uh, you know, it's just between you and the Lord. You're able to lay down everything into His feet. The book of Psalms said that we are to cast all of our cares to Him. For our Father cares for us. Amen? You're in the house of the Lord and God is starting to feel the vacuum inside our hearts. And there is an exchange happening on right this very moment. Amen? Amen. I would like us right now, once again, to please stand for the reading of the Word of God. By the grace of the Lord, I would like to pre present a message which I am, in, I am going to entitle Prisoners of Hope. I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, you and me, all of us, when you are a child of God, God calls you, you are a prisoner of hope. We are prisoners of hope. You may be thinking what those pastors are uh, meaning and uh, what you say now. Anyways, right this very moment, I'd like us to open our Bibles quickly to the book of I, oh, Brother Zechariah. Can we go please? Zechariah chapter 9 verses 9 to 14. Zechariah's the second book before the Old Testament closes. So if you check in uh, Matthew, we just go, go a little uh, backward. Two more books and that is Zechariah. Chapter 9 verses 9 until 14. And I will highlight particularly my message on verse 12. But anyway, I would like us to read on the whole of the passage I am giving us. Okay, if you're ready, go with me. Here we go. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he. Humble and mounted on a donkey, on a coal, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim, the war horse from Jerusalem. And the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Verse 12. Return to your stronghold, O your prisoners of hope. Today I declare I will restore to you double. For I have met Judah as my bow. I have made Ephraim its arrow. I will stir up your sons, O Zion, against your sons, O Greece and wield you like a wire sword. Then the Lord will appear over them, and his arrow will go forth like lightning. The Lord God will sound the trumpet, and will march forth in the weird winds of the south. Wow, very nice, very beautiful. And I guarantee you're going to be a very powerful message this morning. Hallelujah. God bless the reading of this word. I'm inviting us. Let's bow our heads and uh, we come to the presence. Every human being, must have to choose whether which or whichever he would have to go or what kind of attitude would he have to retain inside of him. Because every every human being in the planet is a program. And a program of someone else or somebody else but of himself to what he would choose. For remember, man is created by God with a freedom, with a choice. We got a free will. I'd like you to tap somebody's shoulder and say, you are a person with a free will. Come on. And that free will inside of us, when we choose which, when we decide what, ladies and gentlemen, that becomes your program. That becomes 
the unraveling of what you will be now, tomorrow, the following week, the following month, and the whole of your lifetime, and maybe forever. But you know what? Our Bible, the Word of God, taught us something instead. God is inviting us. Because you know what? The calling of God, rather to His children, is to be strictly, solely, and exclusively to be prisoners of hope. One can be choosing which to be hopeless or to be hopeful. Hello, are you with me? Yes. One can be choosing which, which kind of, you know, a program he wanted to lock himself. Think, think of that right this very moment. Will you choose to become, okay, I shall be hopeless in the whole of my lifetime. My mindset, my action, my, ad, my attitude, everything, I will be hopeless. Or will you rather go to the other side and agree with God that you only, you strictly, you only solely and exclusively to be a prisoner of hope. Prisoner of hope, ladies and gentlemen, is a figure of speech. In other words, you have, you have no other choice you are choosing. You don't have, uh, or rather you are not standing in the two ways at the same time. Rather, you strictly are only heading into one direction. And that is only hope. Amen? Amen. I love the story, and I presume you know this already. One quite familiar. You know, a donkey fall into a pit. The owner did all of his best, you know, to lift the poor, you know, uh, pitiful donkey out from out from this empty well but to no avail the donkey cannot really be lifted so the owner decided okay i don't want to see you there suffering the whole of the day and maybe following day and die gradually so he thought of i will apply a mercy killing you know euthanasia are you with me yeah. now because the situation is something rural and something remote uh, the owner, old man, asking his neighbor, you know, to throw dirt little by little uh, to the pit. That is to bury already the, the donkey, because the donkey, in all of his struggles, starting to bleed and maybe limping and uh, breaking few of his few of his uh, bones in his legs. So they were throwing dirt. Are you still there, amen? Yeah? You know the story, and. Uh, the donkey were now feeling more, feeling more depressed. Why? Because, hey, what are you doing? You don't love me. I mean, the donkey may be thinking, instead of you to help me, instead of you to rescue me here, you're throwing the, I mean, uh, obviously, you want him to bury me alive. Of course, honestly, it was the intention of the owner. But you know what? The donkey, instead of succumbing to hopelessness. Somebody say hopelessness. hopelessness. Instead of succumbing to hopelessness, you know, the donkey thought of another uh, another way out. So as, as the, the dirt, when we're now falling to, uh, to the place where he was to bury him, he, he started to, thump, to stump uh, the soil. And the soil as it, is, it was falling, we're now deposited as, as an elevation. And now the owner was understanding what was, you know, the action of the donkey. Make long story short, because of it, the donkey was able to be rescued out. Amen? Yeah. Now the, the donkey bound himself rather not to become a servant or a prisoner of hopelessness. Rather, he bound himself to be a servant or a prisoner of hope. Let's give God a clap of praise. Zechariah spoke about the people of God in the last days. That their attitude will be men and women who are servants of hope, not of hopelessness. Amen? Amen. I would like to ask you, what kind of attitude do you retain inside of you? Let me tell you, it is inevitable. Now and then, in some way or the other, you and I will collide into unexpected uh, experiences in our lives. Where those those which you desire, those that you hope, those that you wish, those that you dream, do not work according to how you are planning them. Instead, unexpectedly, those that you know you you uh, 
You want it not to be happening are the ones happening. Now the real test comes to you and you will have to decide which. The real, the real acid test will be now to be determined, you know, uh, on the tip of your lips to what you will decide. For example, on a failure. Are you with me, amen? Do not say because you're a child of God, you cannot collide or experience failures. I tell you, you still are a human being. Amen. And all of us are yet living in this broken world. How would you re respond to a failure? Will you allow failure to kill your hope? Or rather, will you allow hope to use failure to be your stepping stone to reach the hope that God is speaking about? Are you with me? Amen? Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. The Lord is sending me right this very morning to remind us, to encourage us that you and I must be only people of hope. Amen? Amen. That even amidst hopelessness, our choice will still be hope. That even, sin, even in fear, our faith will still be hope. Amen? Amen. When, 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 gloom, when it seems that all around are doom and gloom, you know what? Our, expe our expectation will still be hope. Amen? Amen. And thank you for Sister Dahlia. One morning, or one afternoon brother, our son went home. This was like five years ago. They must stay very down. You see, when you are in a family, you need, you need to, to have some fallbacks to strengthen you. And parents, this is one of our jobs, to be men and women of hope for our children. Or the other way around, if, you, if your parents are running out of strength, your children needs to be a foundation, a strength of hope for your parents. Are you still there, amen? One morning, or one afternoon, brother, he was a little, he was a little down, uh, because uh, to this expected competitions, and he was, you know, Gamaliel was very high uh, because he prepared about it. It was something, a competition that can uh, lead him to another level and, uh, you know, can become a certain recognition. He really wanted it. He really wanted it. And he went home and telling Mama, he was a little depressed, he was a little down, and obviously he, he lost the strength. I didn't make it. There were like four or five entries. Only one made it. I didn't make it, Mama. And, you know, he was a little depressed and, you know, went straight to the room. I don't know if he I can remember, don't recall if he locked the room. But you know, Mama had a kind of faith. Went to the sun and encouraged, no, God will make a way. It was my sermon last Sunday. God will make a way. If it's yours, it will really be yours and God will provide the way. It was a Friday. Following day, Saturday, Sunday, came to the church. And you know what? Indeed, Monday, my son was called because the problem was actually not, not, uh, not his piece, not, not his research, but the panel who judged. Though the panel committed some errors that the school or rather Department of Education made some, some restitution. They rectified, okay, you and you, you made it, you made it to the level of uh, the division. You know, when you are high school and, and or public high school, you will be competing amongst in the division level. Then later to the provincial, make no story short, he was able to go to the national level and even drop number 13. His graduation, he received citation. Thank God! Refuse to say no when hopelessness knocks at your door, amen? Okay. My daughter, already two months now in uh, Saudi, and uh, to let you know, Aya astounded because every day they do nothing work and rest but eating apples and grapes and drinking uh, drinking milk and uh, you know they, they work in a in an environment where everything is air conditioned of course Saudi you go outside it's 45 degrees centigrade so air conditioned and even in the room in Salah everything everything air conditioned and she got it even more, you know, skin water. And wow, to God be the glory. The story of Aya, she was on her first month already in Manila. She spent a lot already. And then uh, she was high in her spirit to take this certain exam, qualifying her for an entry to Saudi. She already had, you know, the employment. It was a direct hiring. But she needed, you know, a, an agency. In fact, 
the agent, uh, rather the hospital hiring her, is anxious to get her already. They were the ones, I mean, this, age, uh, this hospital is the ones in her area. Ella had already the, the visa, but she had to qualify on the exam. But there was this news that bothered him, bothered her. She took the exam, and you know what? The qualifying exam was like 65, she only made it 64. She was really very despondent, that didn't stop the cry, calling her mama, I want to go home, I want to go. You know when you're down, when you have nowhere to go, you will always slow to go home. And the house must be home. And second, acts must be a home. Amen? Amen. Where there is love, where there is acceptance. And Sister Bennett, you know how to answer, how to reply. Applying the, I tell you, every time you apply the Word of God, it works. I, I didn't hear you. Right God now. always works. Amen? Amen? Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. When the devil knocks at your door, do not reply the enemy, you know, with psychology. Do not reply the enemy to what your human knowledge, what you have human knowledge, you know? Reply, answer, battle the enemy with the word of God. You know, Jesus, when the devil tempted him, Jesus would reply in the word of God said, you know, we are to reply, we are to battle with the word of God. That's what Sister Dennis said. Now you stay in Manila. Let's trust in the Lord. God shall defend you. You are a child of God. And she was strengthened. Make long story short. Even that, I mean that Sunday, you know, we needed another 5,000 got provided a need. And, you know, following like two or three weeks, she took the exam. And she hit it, you know, even with, with greater score. Make long story short again. Our daughter is in Saudi today. Wider, friendlier, and enjoying the goodness of the Lord. You and I listen as a child of God, you only are strictly, solely, and exclusively a prisoner of hell. Amen? Amen. Let's give the Lord a cup of praise. Now listen to me. Refuse to give up. Repeat, refuse. You know, even on situation where it seems to be like everything falling down. Refuse to give up. Refuse to be hopeless. Why? Because you are bound only to be a hopeful person. Are you with me? Amen? Amen. There are these two things I would like to underscore in this wise. Number one, that is why we ought to fill our hearts with stuff of hope. Huh? How can we become men and women of hope? We must go, ladies and gentlemen, to things where it only will secure hope to us. You know, when you watch TV, there are those things that are not of hope. Uh, mothers, you need to be very careful on what soap you are watching. Because sometimes those soap stories are instead giving you wrong suggestions to be hopeless. Huh? On movies, you need to be very careful. You need to be petty. The war, the war, uh, the war now in Gaza, Israel against the Palestinians. Oh, this, this really, I mean, this war is really crazy. You know? It's something which is beyond politically motivated. Actually, it's a spiritual warfare. Satan himself inciting, you know, uh, this, this blind people. These people are not knowing what they are doing. And these Palestinians, they're fighting against God. They're fighting against the people of God. Can you imagine every day on the radio, every single day, every single minute on their state-run television, it's being advertised. It's, it's been, you know, uh, brainwashing the people. In fact, I read, I read this documentary. Children, since, you know, uh, they, they start to have knowledge, or since starting when they are in school, it's being taught as part of their curriculum to hate the Jews. It's being taught in their schools that, you know, they are supposed to, to see the oceans. Uh, the, the Red Sea to be red the year, you know, the color to be more red or to be red the year, because uh, to be red the year of the blood of the Jews. It is it is taught, you know, in their in their mosque that you, you would you would become a saint, you would become a a martyr if you will die for the cause uh, of the death of the Jews. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? That is why. 
they they place their rockets you know inside mosques inside hospitals inside inside schools because of this thwarted because of this twisted ideology and you know what this ideology is not only human this is coming from the devil for the devil did not come if the devil is uninvited but only to steal to kill and to destroy hello are you with me Amen. but jesus said i have come to give you life and that you will have it more abundantly amen, amen. let's give the lord a clap of praise come on so we ought to fill our hearts with stuff of hope. I, I know of a pastor friend. I just, you know, shook my hand and I said, maybe the second generation can create a change. Because this pastor, you know, uh, another generation older, when he preaches all the time, his sermon, uh, his sermon presentation are all condemnation. You are, for example, you know, he would, he would stand in the pulpit and say, You are carnal. You are to repent. You will go to hell. Hello, are you with me? At least the people is in the church. Uh, you fall short, you know, to the standard of God. You are displeasing to God. God is not happy to you. God hates you. Oh my God. You know, I listened the one time in our group because every Thursday we meet ourselves together with pastors. And I just deep inside of me, what kind perhaps of a sermon does this brother, does this friend preach every Sunday? Hey, he's not in his church, but he's bringing his kind of his church here amongst pastors. And I said, maybe the second generation, because I know the son talks of a different thing, speaks of another message, speaks of another language. It's a language of hope. That is why, ladies and gentlemen, we ought to fill our hearts with stuffs of hope. Are you with me? Amen? Amen. Let's give the Lord a cup of praise. And another second is, we must love to go to places where we can gain hope, where we can get hope. Thanks be to the living God. Acts is a place of hope. Amen? Amen. Are you there? Amen. Amen. Limit yourselves to only go to places where you can get hope. Did you hear that story about this man that was about to jump to commit suicide? You know, on this bridge? Because he was too discouraged of what had happened to him. Somebody saw him and wanted, you know, to help him. Wanted to save him in uh, jumping over in the bricks. Now for a while as the man wanting to pacify the person who was about to jump, you know in five minutes because of the despondence and the discouragement, this jumper, you know, uh, had in his heart, the man decided, okay, we will jump together over the bricks. So both of them died. Ladies and gentlemen, we must choose really not just what to receive to fill inside our hearts, but places we are to go. Because that will determine what we will become. Amen? Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. Is it making sense to you, ladies and gentlemen? Why I'm sharing this to you? Because we are living a time, we're living a generation where life is getting tougher. Where life gets to be harder. Where life gets to be bleaker. You know, Jesus is coming back, let me tell you. The Lord in an allegory said, before the Lord returns, situation will be like of a woman who goes through a, a birth time, through a labor, mothers, you know what I'm saying? Before a baby to be born, the mother would have to go, to go through uh, the greatest of the pain in life. And that is, you know, uh, labor, child labor. And that's what the world is happening today. Life is really, uh, what is this? Uh, life is really harder now. That is, if you do not have God inside of you, amen? Are you still there? Amen. Recently, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's, it's now going to be two months. You know, uh, our, radio ministry, our radio ministry, the main mainstream broadcasting. And I would like to take this opportunity as my privilege to say thank you for your prayers. And thank you for supporting. I know, if not all, most of you are tuning in and listening to uh, Sunday Difference, to God be the glory. And there is this another 
offer uh, of an expansion to the ministry in media will go to a daily column, column writing in the Sambonga today. I have been for 19 years writing a certain, a certain inspirational column in the Daily Sambonga Times. 19 years. To him be the glory. I started 1995. Now, the manager of our radio station, I'm still there, <laughs> called me. We had a meeting last Monday, asked me, Pastor, we would like the company wish to choose you if you can write for our column in e-media, in media more space in Sabonga today. And I couldn't reply right away him, but the Holy Spirit did inside of me. The Holy Spirit inside of me gave me a promise saying yes, and frequency is daily. And I went on very happy, and I give the Lord thanks, and I ask for His guidance. I ask for His direction. Maybe I will be starting next week. On a Monday or on a Tuesday. Now, the manager wanted me to submit, ladies and gentlemen, uh, a certain sample because he wanted how how is my attack in my presentation. He gave me descriptions and I assimilated and went on following day Tuesday. I was there, you know, in my broken in my broken uh, laptop, just writing things. I finished. I said I submitted. And, uh, and you know what? As soon as I finished writing, somebody, a woman on the other side, a sister from another town, unexpectedly, her husband around, together with some friends, showed up here in Zamboanga, wanting to see, see me quickly as I could because they're coming to Zamboanga only for a round trip. I had no idea what was she wanting to see me. I said, 30 minutes. I may be able to see you because you know my time on that day. And I said, yes, I, I wanted to see you. I'm still there, amen? And uh, at 12 or another 2.30, you know, we met in one of the malls. We exchanged pleasantries at maybe at 3.30. She called me in a place. We were in another mall and shook my hand and had me, handed me some bills, thick bills in my, thick bills in my palm. I was too shy because I was surrounded around by some people. And she told me, Pastor, uh, that is for the ministry, that is, you know, for your ministry. I placed it in my, in my pocket. And uh, after 30 I'm just confirming that you are serving me. And I'm taking care of you. And I will be liable to take care of you every single step of the way. And maybe that's the word of the Lord for you this morning, ladies and gentlemen. God shall take care of you and me, all of us. Your family, your education, everything. Every single step of the way, God shall and can. Amen? Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. Are you there? Amen? Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. There is always hope. Know this. There is always hope. Come what situations will collide on your way. What may be you're going through now, you will go through ahead in the future. There is always hope because Jesus is our hope. Amen? Amen. Hello? Amen. If your hope is your neighbor, that neighbor can fail you. The Holy Spirit is another man that man can fail you. If your hope is your head knowledge, your head knowledge can go dysfunctional and your head knowledge can fail you. But let me tell you, if your hope is in Jesus, Jesus does not fail. Amen? Amen. Therefore, your hope never fails. Let's give him a clap of praise one more time. <laughs> Colossians chapter 1 verse 27 says, To whom God would make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ. I'd like us to say in that line, say, which is Christ. Come on. Which is Christ. Let's say it louder together. Say, which is Christ. Which is Christ. In you, Christ is not out somewhere in the atmosphere. Thank God, Christ is inside of us. It's in you. I want you to point your finger that to the next person beside you and point inside his eye and say, it's in your heart. Come on. And Jesus, which is inside our heart, is our hope. 
Jesus is our hope. Amen. I like I like you to close your eyes and lift both of your hands and tell the Lord, Jesus, you are my hope. Amen. Amen. Let's give him a love of praise. <laughs> you know how many times where I think I lost, where I think it's already the end. Where I thought there's no really way out. I've been in the ministry for 23 years. I would just close my eyes and sometimes, or most of the tears would just fall from my eyes and say, Lord, you're my only way. You're my only hope. And God would smile to me back. And often and most of the time, God surprises me. That's what, it's what the expertise of the Lord. He likes and He wants to surprise us always. He surprises us. He surprises me all the time. And to give me a way out. Now, brothers and sisters, remember, God already engraved since time eternity past that your destiny is the destiny of a bright and a blessed future. Now, this is the second. First, I said Jesus is our own. The number one is our destiny is already determined. I would like to read it back. God has already engraved. Say with me, engraved. Engraved. Engraved since eternity past that your destiny is a destiny of a bright and a blessed future. In Jeremiah 29 verse 11, if you memorize, it says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. It is a bright it is a blessed future. Amen. 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 I would like you to place your palm to your chest and tell them with me and say, Lord, it belongs to me. It may, I'm an emotional person, obviously. You, you know that. Two Sundays or two Saturdays ago, uh, we went for a wedding to two of our young professionals in the church. I relate this already to you, but for the sake of something I wanted to bring about. I, I, I've been uh, out of knowledge of it, imagine for six years. You know, this, this couple have, have been members in our church for six years. Well, two years, or two or four, uh, two or four years, they were away from the church because uh, they transferred already to Manila and been, been working. But the man, you know the group? All along, I, ne I never did know that the, the groom actually was a total orphan. The Bible said that God is the father of the fatherless and He is the prote protector of the widows. Now in our church, now listen, always know who are the widows. Never uh, take advantage of them. Know in the church who are orphans. Do not hurt them. Because their protector is the Lord. You know the Bible said when they are hurt, orphans. You know widows when they are hurt. When they run unto God and ask God for help. God may stand against you. That is why never take advantage. Never abuse or misuse orphans or widows. Are you still there? Amen? Amen. The name of the group is Arniel. Very much blessed of the story about this young man. That I even wrote his story in the days of Bonga Times of my column. At the age perhaps of 10, Arniel, Arniel's father, died in a land, uh, rather in a coal mine accident. The father was a miner. While inside the tunnel, something there was a blast that happened, you know, underneath. And the father died, one of those who was a casualty at the age of 10. Maybe 16, 17, uh, the mother also passed away. So that made him totally an orphan. Ladies and gentlemen, not easy to grow up as an orphan. Are you still there, amen? Yeah? How many of you here know what I'm saying? Because that's your experience. But thank God because 
He lived with an aunt and an uncle, or aunts and uncles that are good and nice. He finished his studies. And the man is in gifted with wisdom. Hello? That's how things are. You know, when you are disadvantaged, God will give you another way for a balance. He, he did well in his studies. Can you imagine? In the national board examination, their classmates with, with arms. By the way, Amos was the reason why he came to the church. He was invited by Amos in the church. He got born again here. And uh, during the national board exam, because he's gifted with wisdom, he ran number 20 nationally. And those who took the board exam were about more than 800. Imagine it. And then later, after knowing there was this company who learned about his performance, offered him another scholarship. It was a scholarship for another education, marine engineering. He finished, he finished uh, mechanical engineering. He was invited for a scholarship, everything to be paid for in this company for another five months. He finished marine engineering for five months, took, you know, board exam for marine engineering, made it, and was hired right away. Uh, he boarded, you know, an international ship. And little did I know, because this boy, because he's uh, a total of an history serve and a silent, a silent type in the church, doesn't talk a lot, loves to be instead alone and would retreat, you know, at the back. You know, we fellowship here in the church. Would love to get his cell phone and, you know, I cannot imagine how in the world he was able to court, you know, this tall girl talkative, a total opposite to him. Her name is Charmaine. Make long story short, the end of, you know, uh, engaged to be engaged. And the man worked at least two years and saved and saved until he was able to save at least 500,000 to finance his wedding. Now listen to me, boys. I want you to beat Arniel. Do not marry and offer to your, your bride-to-be, okay, because I love you and you love me, and let's prove to the world that our love is integrity, or rather, our love is pure. Okay, let's have a celebration even just with Pandesal. Do not. Prove to the world that you can make it because you're a child of God, amen? Amen. Yeah. Uh, the man would have to prove it, 500,000. And I'm proud of, of these kids and may the Lord bless them, amen? Now think of it. Regardless to what things are happening around you, do not allow all of those negative things to defeat you. Do not allow those negative things to rub what the Lord already said for you and for me, amen? You already have a destiny. Are you still there, amen? amen. Do not say because I'm, you know, I'm a... I'm a child of a poor family. Maybe today you are poor, but the Bible said, let the poor say. Amen. Amen. Do not say, I come from a family whose father and mother didn't finish even elementary. Don't you? Because the Bible said, we are not to despise small beginnings. Amen. Amen. Because the Lord said, if we can be trustworthy on little things, God can trust us bigger things. Amen. After all, when the Lord saw his servants, he said, okay, I shall divide you with talents. The first, he only gave five. What is five? The second, he said, okay, I will only give you two. And to the third, he said, okay, I'll only give you one. It's not on the beginning that matters that you only have five, two, or one. It's how you engage. It's how you multiply to what the Lord gave on you. Because everything always starts little and small. Amen. Amen. The first, you know, invested what the Lord gave, gave him and increased to 100%. Second as well, but the third, because he was afraid. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what? One of the things a child of God can have always, because he is scared. Hello. I like it to say, now look at this next person beside me, beside you and say, tell, tell the person, one of the worst appeal, examination was uh, labor law. It's our, uh, labor law is 
four units in our curriculum today, or this semester. All the rest are only three units or two units. I mean, this is the hardest. And man, our professors, the strictest, I tell you. So, as everyone is, I have a classmate telling me he labored, in, or rather, she labored in the labor law. Uh, you know, uh, this, this, this friend who works as well in the NLRC was the companion to Tita Daisy, uh, Clemenia, family name. Uh, she's, she's also 41. Master, I labored in the labor law. So me here as well. And you know, 3 in the afternoon, 3.30, I was still there trying and pushing myself to memorize. And I tell you, pages and pages. And my brain's calling up for a break, but I need to push. Now, there was this, there was this thought in me, you know, my flesh telling me, oh, do not go to the exam, and pretend to be sick. Anyway, your professor is your friend. Do not go to the exam, rather take it some other day for a special exam. Then the Holy Spirit tell me, son, you go. You know, when the Holy Spirit will talk to you, He will not convince you with reasons. Go to the Bible, God will always be precise. Go, walk. When, when the Lord called Abraham, I want you to go to a place where I wanted you. God did not explain. Why? Because rationally, God demands obedience. Say the word obedience. Obedience, obedience is better than sacrifice. Okay, Lord, I didn't, I didn't take uh, a nap. Well, I, I ate more. I don't know. When I study, my, my stomach gets to be hungrier. And there I was on the exam. And not what it seems. I tell you, we studied harder. Questions were easier. I was able to make it and finish it in less than an hour. Trusting the Lord and believing the Lord. That I did make it, and I did it, and I did make it well. So the Lord telling me after I was taking the exam, see, I told you. Then I praised the Lord. I said, "Thank you, O oh God." And following hour, I needed to go to conduct a service, uh, a funeral service in Saint Peter. I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, you and I are not subject to the situations what is around us. We only are subject to our Lord. We are. We are not prisoners of fear. We are not prisoners of the principles of this world. We only are prisoners of Christ. Amen? That is why, ladies and gentlemen, you and I are only servants. Servants of God. Amen? Is it making sense? Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. I would like to close my sermon with, you know, explaining this. Every good thing to happen to you and to me is leading only to a one and one reason only. It is because of the redemption plan of God for the world. One day, there are a few of you here who will become doctors. Never forget that you will be there not just to profit for more money. Many of us here will one day and very soon will become lawyers, amen? Hello. It's not just to make money. One of, many of you will become successful business people. Yes, God will gonna bless us. God will gonna bless our families, but never forget. Never forget why God placed you there because God wanted to make you a vessel. God wanted you to become a channel of blessings, blessings to others that many will come into the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. You receive the word of God today? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. And let's all stand in the presence of God. We're going to pray.